Harper Audio presents A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. Read by Roy Detrice. Prologue We should start back, Garrett urged, as the woods began to grow darker on them. The wildlings are dead. Do the dead frighten you? Sir Waymar Royce asked with just the hint of a smile. Garrett did not rise to the bait. He was an old man, past fifty, and he had seen the lordlings come and go. Dead is dead, he said. We have no business with the dead. Are they dead? Royce asked softly. What proof have we? Will saw them, Garrett said, and if he says they are dead, that's proof enough for me. Will had known they would drag him into the quarrel sooner or later. He wished it had been later rather than sooner. My mother told me that dead men sing no songs, he put in. My wet nurse said the same thing, Will, Royce replied. Never believe anything you hear at a woman's tit. There are things to be learned even from the dead. His voice echoed too loud in the twilight forest. We have a long ride before us, Garrett pointed out. Eight days, maybe nine, and night is falling. Sir Waymar Royce glanced at the sky with disinterest. It does that every day about this time. Are you unmanned by the dark, Garrett? Will could see the tightness around Garrett's mouth, the barely suppressed anger in his eyes under the thick black hood of his cloak. Garrett had spent forty years in the night's watch, man and boy, and he was not accustomed to being made light of. Yet it was more than that. Under the wounded pride, Will could sense something else in the older man. You could taste it, a nervous tension that came perilous close to fear. Will shared his unease. He had been four years on the wall. The first time he had been sent beyond, all the old stories had come rushing back, and his bowels had turned to water. He had laughed about it afterwards. He was a veteran of a hundred rangings by now, and the endless dark wilderness that the Southerns called the Haunted Forest had no more terrors for him. Until tonight. Something was different tonight. There was an edge to this darkness that made his hackles rise. Nine days they had been riding, north and northwest, and then north again, farther and farther from the wall, hard on the track of a band of wildling raiders. Each day had been worse than the day that had come before. Today was the worst of all. A cold wind was blowing out of the north, and it made the trees rustle like living things. All day Will had felt as though something was watching him, something cold and implacable that loved him not. Garrett had felt it too. Will wanted nothing so much as to ride hell-bent for the safety of the wall, but that was not a feeling to share with your commander, especially not a commander like this one. Sir Waymar Royce was the youngest son of an ancient house with too many heirs. He was a handsome youth of eighteen, grey-eyed and graceful and slender as a knife. Mounted on his huge black destrier, the knight towered above Will and Garrett on their smaller garrons. He wore black leather boots, black woolen pants, black moleskin gloves, and a fine supple coat of gleaming black ringmail over layers of black wool and boiled leather. Sir Waymar had been a sworn brother of the Night's Watch for less than half a year, but no one could say he was not prepared for his vacation, at least in so far as his wardrobe was concerned. His cloak was his crowning glory, sable, thick, and black, and soft as sin. Bet he killed them all himself, he did, Garrett told the barracks over wine. Twisted their little heads off, our mighty warrior. They had all shared a laugh. It is hard to take orders from a man you laughed at in your cups, Will reflected as he sat shivering atop his garron. Garrett must have felt the same. Mormont said, we shall track them, and we did, Garrett said. They're dead. They shan't trouble us no more. There's hard riding before us. I don't like this weather. If it snows, we could be a fortnight getting back, and snow's the best we can hope for. Ever seen an ice storm, my lord? The lordlings seemed not to hear him. He started the deepening twilight in that half-bored, half-distracted way he had. Will had ridden with the knight long enough to understand that it was best not to interrupt him when he looked like that. Uh, tell me again what you saw, Will. All the details— 
Sample complete. Ready to continue?